Now today's video is all to do with momentum. We're going to start by looking at the key equation, then we'll look at some examples of calculations, and then finally we'll understand how things like crumple zones and seat belts work. So the first thing to state is that momentum is a vector, which means that it has both a direction and magnitude, which means size. The units of momentum are kilograms meters per second, and you'll understand why if I show you the equation. Now the equation for momentum is mass times velocity. So if we take the individual units, that's kilograms and meters per second, and then we just sit them closer to each other. And that is your unit. Now, one thing you'll often see is the statement that momentum is conserved, and that's going to be very important when we look at the calculations. And all that really means is that momentum before equals momentum after. And that's a statement that you'll find yourself making time and time again. So now I want to show you some key examples. So a truck of mass 500 kilograms is moving at four meters per second to the right, and it collides with another truck of mass 1500 kilograms moving at 1.5 meters per second to the right. What is their common velocity after the collision if they stick together? So our first statement is that momentum before equals momentum after. So what is the first truck's momentum? Well, it's its mass. I'm just going to write the equation for momentum up here so you can refer to it, equals mass times velocity. So that first truck has a mass of 500 kilograms and is moving at a velocity of four meters per second. The second truck has a mass of 1500 kilograms and has a velocity of 1.5 meters per second. Now, because they stick together, it means that they have a common mass after the collision, which is 1500 plus 500. And then they have a common velocity, which is what we're after. So now you just need to sort out the equation. What's 500 times 4, 2000? What's 1500 times 1 1.5, 2250? 1500 plus 500 is 2000 multiplied by x and then to work out x we divide both sides by 2000 to get a value of 2.13 meters per second. A second type of example you might get is a recoil velocity question and these seem difficult but I promise they're straightforward if you follow these steps. So Emma is standing still and fires a rifle. The bullet has a mass of 0.045 kilograms and is traveling at 350 meters per second. If Emma has a mass of 60 kilos, with what velocity does she move backwards? So going back to our favorite equation, so momentum before equals momentum after. Emma is standing still, and that therefore means by definition that her momentum before is zero. So what is the momentum after? Well, it's Emma's momentum. So it's her mass times her velocity, which is what we're being asked to find plus the momentum of the bullet, so that's its mass, times its velocity. So sort out your numbers, and then you need to take 15.75 away from both sides, and then divide both sides by 60 to get x by itself, to get minus 0 0.263 meters per second to three significant figures. And it makes sense that it's minus because she's moving in the opposite direction to the bullet. Now, the third type of equation you could be asked about is the equation stating force equals change in momentum over time. So here's an example. A 1500 kilogram car accelerates from rest to a velocity of 30 meters per second. This takes 20 seconds. Calculate the force acting on the car. As always, write out our equation. So we're after force. Our change in momentum is going to be our final momentum minus our initial momentum over time. So the final momentum will be the mass of the car, 1500 kilograms, times its velocity, minus its mass, times its initial velocity, which was zero because it was starting from rest, over time, which is 20 seconds. So 45,000 divided by 20 equals 2,250 newtons, because remember, newton is the unit of force. Another thing they do like to ask you about is safety procedures in cars. So that includes things like crumple zones, when the front bumper of the car collapses, when it collides with an object. It includes seat belts, airbags. And they'll often ask you, how do these features prevent serious injury? 
and I promise the answer is always the same and you need to support your answer around the equation force equals change in momentum over time because what is effectively happening is that although the change in momentum obviously stays the same the time over which that change in momentum occurs increases because the seatbelt stretches the airbag inflates the crumple zone crumples so in your answer you're going to state the change in momentum stays the same but occurs over a longer time frame this reduces the force felt due to the equation force equals change in momentum over time a student is playing a game with some empty tins he throws a wet cloth of, of mass 0 0.15 kilograms at the tins the wet cloth moves at a velocity of six meters per second state the equation linking momentum mass and velocity Momentum equals mass times velocity. Calculate the momentum of the wet cloth and give the unit. So as always, write down your equation and then line up all your numbers and you'll avoid making silly errors. So the mass we know is 0 0.15, the velocity is 6, and therefore our final answer is 0 0.9 kilograms meters per second. The wet cloth sticks to tin 1. The mass of tin 1 is 0 0.05 kilograms. The cloth and tin 1 move away together. Calculate their velocity. So you want to make the statement momentum before equals momentum after. We know the momentum before because it's the momentum of the wet cloth, which was 0 0.9. And then the momentum after, remember, is mass times velocity. So that's the equation for momentum. The mass is going to be both the mass of tin 1 and the mass of the cloth, which is 0 0.15. And then they have a combined velocity because they stuck to each other. So sort out your mass and then divide both sides by 0 0.2 to find x. And your answer here is 4.5 meters per second. 7. Cars have a number of features that make them safe in a collision. Apart from seat belts, name two safety features that reduce the risk of serious injury in a car crash. You can use your common sense here, so anything like airbags or the crumple zone on a car. Photograph A shows a person wearing a seat belt. Using ideas of momentum and force, explain how the seat belt reduces the risk of serious injury in a car crash, and that's worth four marks. And so I already explained to you at the start of this video how you would approach these sorts of questions because it's all about reducing the force felt by the person. So first of all, you want to state that you have the same momentum change regardless of whether you have that seatbelt or not. However, that same momentum change occurs over a longer time period due to the seatbelt stretching. And then as always in physics, state an appropriate equation According to the equation, force equals change in momentum over time. Therefore, a reduced force will be felt on the body. State the equation linking momentum, mass and velocity. A truck of mass 10,000 kilograms is moving with a velocity of 4.5 meters per second. A car of mass 1,500 kilograms has the same momentum as the truck. Calculate the velocity of the car. So we know that the car and the truck have the same momentum, so we're just going to make that statement here. So the momentum of the truck will be its mass, 10,000 kilograms, times its velocity, and we note that that equals the momentum of the car, so its mass, 1,500 kilograms, times its velocity, which is x. So sort out your equation, 10,000 times 4.5 equals 1,500x and then divide both sides by 1500 to get an answer of 30. In a crash test, a car runs into a wall and stops. The momentum of the car before the crash is 22,500 kg meters per second. The car stops in 0 0.14 seconds. Calculate the average force on the car during the crash. So force equals change in momentum over time. So that's 22,500 
divided by 0 0.14 to get 160,000 newtons. 5. An ice skater throws a 0 0.23 kilogram snowball with a velocity of 30 meters per second. State the equation linking momentum, mass and velocity. Calculate the initial momentum of the snowball. So I'm going to rewrite that equation. The mass of the snowball was 0 0.23, the velocity was 13, and therefore our final answer is 3 kg meters per second. When the skater throws the snowball forward, she slides backwards on the ice. Explain why she moves in this direction. So I promise these answers are always the same. So we need to state, first of all, that momentum is conserved. And then you want to say that the momentum of the snowball and the skater are equal and opposite. And that's due to the momentum being initially zero because the snowball hasn't been thrown yet. A boy of mass 43.2 kilograms runs and jumps on a stationary skateboard. The boy lands on the skateboard with a horizontal velocity of 4.1 meters per second. State the relationship between momentum, mass and velocity. The skateboard has a mass of 2.5 kilograms. Using ideas about the conservation of momentum, calculate the combined velocity of the boy and skateboard just after the boy lands on it. So, if we're using ideas about conservation of momentum, that means that momentum before equals momentum after. So, what are the individual momentums before? Let's take, first of all, the momentum of the boy. So, we know his velocity is 4.1 metres per second. We know his mass is 43.2 kilograms. The skateboard is stationary, that's key, because although its mass is 2.5, its velocity is therefore zero. And then the momentum after, because the boy is standing on the skateboard, they have a combined mass of 43.2 plus 2.5, and then a common velocity, which we're after, which is x. So now sort out your equation. So you get 177.12 on the left-hand side, 45.7 on the right-hand side. Divide both sides by 45.7 to find x. And your final answer to three significant figures is 3.88 meters per second.